Hey everybody, welcome. It's Andrew Ains of Golf Academy. As always, very warm welcome. Thanks for tuning in, having a look at the video today. Um, apologies, been a bit of an absence from YouTube. I haven't posted anything for about the last week or so. Um, foolishly took on a little DIY project at home. Now, if I had to put myself on a handicap basis for DIY skills, I'm, uh, I'm 18 to 24 handicap. Pretty useless, to be honest, but we've got this rather large patio. I don't know why I'm telling you this. Um, you might be interested, <laughs> you might not. Uh, got this big patio at home out the back. All the grouting's gone on it. I thought, i tell you what, I reckon I can repoint that. So I started scraping. It's one of those jobs. You start it and you think, why on earth did I start this job? It took me like a whole week to scrape all this grout out, grout out and then put new grout in. But I'm nearly done. I'm absolutely wrecked. I'm definitely sticking to golf um, rather than uh, try and further my DIY career. But anyway, it was a good job. That's why I haven't been doing any YouTube. Anyway, I digress as usual, rambling along. Um, date today, folks, is the 10th of March, 12th of April is the opening date here at the Academy. Can't wait. Just getting everything ready um, as much as I can for my reopening. The first week back's already pretty much booked up. Lots of interest in fittings, uh, especially ping. G425 range is really creating a lot of interest, as is the new Cobra. So lots of fittings booked in. There's going to be lots of rusty golfers who haven't hit a golf ball over here in my part of the world for the best part of three to four months. Um, golf courses will reopen in England on the 29th of March, but indoor facilities and non-essential shops won't reopen to the 12th of April. So it's going to be really busy. Combination of people not playing golf, the Masters, spring, it's the perfect storm. So I'm going to be a busy boy for so the rest of the summer. Anyway, the purpose of this video, besides saying hello to you all, I did a video which I'll put a little end card, a um, little marker up here. It was on my purchase, rare eBay purchase was the name of the video, and I'll put an end card up. I bought this set of Mizuno Pro TN87 irons secondhand off eBay. And I did a little bit of video telling you all about the history, which I'm not going to repeat, and I hit some balls in the net. And then my next job was to try and refurbish them and, um, try and well, I did refurbish them and put a new set of grips on, get them all ready, and they're all done. So let me put up some nice little close-up shots while I'm chattering away here of what I've done to them. They, they polished up really well. I got them on the polishing machine and went through the buffing process um, there's another video which I've done on that, which I'll link if you're interested in that process. I didn't actually film the process of refurbishing because I've done it in other videos. It took me time wise, I probably spent the best part of two to three hours working on these clubs. It's not something you can rush. I've repainted the bottoms, the numbers and the little decals in there. I've touched those up with paint. I've polished up the ferrules. I've put a new set of lambkin grips on here. It was evident that these clubs at some stage in their life had been reshafted. I had my suspicions that this wasn't the original shaft. They're fitted with a set of Brunswick Precision 6.5 steel shaft, pretty stiff, almost like extra stiff. And they were all over the shop. I think whoever fitted them, well, needs definitely need to look at their uh, skills as a as a club repairer because they were shocking. I think they tried to make them all half inch longer than standard. Some were half inch longer than standard. They got little plugs in the end. Some weren't. They hadn't been cut to the right length, so the shaft lengths weren't graded. There should be half inch increments between the clubs. They were literally all over the shop. So I took all the plugs out. I had to sort of shorten some irons down. Um, that took me a little while actually to do that, but they're all absolutely spot on now, um, as they should be. So they play absolutely beautiful. The standard, standard loft, standard lie, they've all been loft and lied in the machine here. So I think you'll agree that they've come up looking pretty sporty, haven't they? So, you know, the next question is, what do I do with them? You know, I've been after a set of these for quite a few years. I think what I'm going to do, I was going to refurbish them and sell them immediately. I want to play a couple of rounds of golf with these. I want to take them to a nice golf course, preferably a Lynx course. So I'll probably head up to uh, Royal Birkdale at some stage and have a round of golf with my brother who's a member up there. 
I can just imagine these irons off a sort of a nice tight lynx lie. Beautiful. Um, but saying that, <laughs> I'm always willing to sell things. Now, if somebody's got their eye on these and would like them to buy them, I'll probably sell them as well. I'm not going to divulge the price on them um, on this video, but if you want to have a private conversation with me um, to buy these clubs, then I will put a link down below to my uh, website address, which you can then send me a message in. They're a beautiful set of irons for the connoisseur. Very, very playable. You will need a fairly quick swing speed to get these clubs working. The 6.5s are quite stiff. Um, you know, you're going to need a club speed with an iron sort of mid to high 80s and above to really get this shaft working. And, and again, I don't want to pigeonhole who should be using these irons, but again, to get the most out of a club like this, you need to be a reasonably good ball striker. You know, if you're hitting it all over the face, a set of irons like this are going to beat you up a little bit. But, you know, if you, you find in the middle of the club fairly often, and um, they're a beautiful set of irons. Three to pitching wedge in there. And there we are. It was fun getting the set. It was fun refurbish them. Um, we'll try and, if nobody buys them, then we'll have a little game of golf with them at some stage. That's about it. I don't think I've got anything else to really tell you. We're still waiting for the G425 demo equipment to arrive. That will arrive before I reopen. I think that's scheduled to arrive sometime in a couple of weeks time. As soon as that arrives, I will be doing some product review on that. That'll be like the latest ever review done because I didn't get access to that equipment when it was first launched. So I really am intrigued to see if the G425 is any better performance than the G410. One thing I hope they have solved with the G425, the paint finish on the G410 wear was pretty awful. Um, I've seen some of the G410s come back, you know, which have only played a season of golf and the paint wear on the sole of the club and on the face looked pretty bad. Um, so, you know, and these clubs haven't been abused. It's just maybe hitting off mats or, you know, hitting off fairway and the paint wear is, is not good. So I hope they've addressed that issue um, because a few customers have brought them back and said, you know, the clubs are great, but Look at the wear and yeah, I don't know if anyone else has experienced that with G410, sole of the club particularly where it interacts with the turf or a mat. So let's see how that goes. But yeah, it'd be really fun to hit them. Anyway, I babbled on long enough. Um, anything else to say? Picked up another set of ancient Mizuno irons, a set of Mizuno Pro irons, originals, which I picked up for about, I pay for about 80 quid on eBay, 75, 80 quid. Three to Sandine, I think I've got in these. So I might do a video before I reopen up on a refurb on those. Again, one of my favorite Mizuno irons. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, hey, thanks for watching the video today. Any questions about anything, I'll try and help you with it. Post your comments down below. If you're new to the channel, do us a big favor and click on that subscribe button. And if you like the video, give it a little thumbs up like because that helps the video get spread on YouTube and. I'm always trying to grow this channel. Um, still only got about just over 10,000 subscribers. I'd, I'd love to get more um, and grow the channel and, and become a slightly bigger influencer. But um, I guess I've just got to be patient and wait for that to happen. But I couldn't do it without your support watching these videos. So please subscribe. It really does help. That's it. I'm off. Bye for now.